greatest adventure is what lies ahead today and tomorrow are yet to be said Hello everyone, this is Noah of Consequence back again with a new video. This is episode 32 in a series which recounts my ongoing Dungeons and Dragons campaign, which is now in its ninth year. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button at the end. So as always, spoiler alert, I will be revealing details in this video, which are found in this adventure module. And as a reminder, this is the current makeup of the adventuring party. So where we left off last time, the main group of characters were fighting a pair of hill giants whom the uh, orc lieutenants with them had told them were the torturers of this place. And meanwhile, uh, Varys and Gorbadoc were leading some newly rescued prisoners back to where the rest of the party was located and all of this activity is taking place in this general area. So after the first hill giant torture was defeated, Obrak and Aramis moved up to engage the second one and uh, Aramis immediately scored a critical hit against it, which you can see there in the chat window. And meanwhile, uh, Garrett and Niob were using missile weapons against the hill giant. Uh, Gorbin Varus caught up to the main group just as the second hill giant was defeated. You can see them there off on the right hand side of the screenshot. The three orc prisoners that they were leading were directed to the orc rebel stronghold located down the hallway to the east while the elf and the old man followed Varus and Gorb. The bugbear who had been with these hill giant torturers had run back to the open room to the west when that second hill giant was defeated. So Thoral and Garrett pursued it while Obrak and Aramis began leading the other characters down this corridor heading off to the southwest. Garrett and Thoral found that bugbear who had run away cowering behind a rack in the uh, hill giant's torture chamber, and they quickly dispatched him. Meanwhile, the rest of the group headed down that southwest corridor because they had seen another bugbear uh, that had previously fled down this hallway, so they decided that they should go down there as quickly as possible and head off whatever threat might come from this direction. Meanwhile, the uh, orc lieutenants who were with the characters escorted the last of the newly freed orc slaves back to their rebel stronghold. And all of this activity is taking place in this hallway here pointed out on the map. So the characters got to the end of that southwest corridor and found a blacksmith shop which was being run by, by two fire giants and just as the orc rebel leader had told them in the last video there were several dwarves who were being held in captivity here as well but unfortunately the fire giants had been forewarned by the bugbear who ran down here and they were waiting for their characters with throwing boulders in hand. And whenever there's an attack against the party in general like that I just roll randomly to see who's targeted but unfortunately in this case both of the giants uh, happened to throw their boulders at and they also hit Niob the cleric and so within just a few seconds of game time she was down and was in danger of dying outright. So uh, Obrak seeing fellow dwarves enslaved and also what had happened to Niob he flew into a rage and uh, he deployed a Christmas reward item he had the snowman of defense or the snow globe of defense and uh, prepared to wade into battle. And meanwhile, Aramis and Gorbadoc began moving up as well. And their, their intent was to 
initiate melee against these fire giants and prevent them from throwing any more boulders. So uh, Orbidoc, Gorbidoc, and Aramis uh, each picked one of the giants and open combat, and uh, Obrak, before following them, used his uh, strength to roll the boulders off of Niobe and the elf and the old man moved up to render first aid on her and um, they ended up having to use all three uh, healing potions that Niobe had been given back at uh, Prince Thrommel's wedding when the characters were rewarded. Um, she had three healing potions that had been given to her and uh, the elf and the old man ended up having to use all three of those to keep Niobe from dying. So uh, in this screenshot, uh, Aramis, Obrak, and Thoral all worked together to defeat the one hill giant you can see there. And uh, meanwhile, Gorb was fighting the second fire giant alone, but then he was suddenly joined by one of the dwarf slaves. The uh, other dwarves had all backed away from the fighting, and you can see them just in the shadows on the north end of the room there. Um, but this one dwarf charged in, swinging the blacksmith's hammer he had, and shouting a dwarven battle cry, and he immediately scored a critical hit on the fire giant that Gorb Gorbadoc was fighting. You can see the results there in the chat window. So more of the characters moved in and began fighting the second fire giant, and uh, soon he was went down as well. And then, of course, they also finished off the bugbear who had run down here to warn the fire giants in the first place. So the, the leader of the dwarf slaves explained that he and the others were out on a prospecting mission for their clan when they were captured by the hill giants. And uh, the other dwarves were trained only as blacksmiths, uh, but he and he introduced him, his, uh, himself as Thrato. You can see his name tag there. Uh, he said that he was a retired warrior, and uh, he offered to help the characters in their plan to overthrow the hill giant fort. And meanwhile, by this time, the orc lieutenants returned to the party and told the characters that all of their fellow orcs were now gathered up in the orc rebel stronghold. So the characters returned back to those caverns uh, to meet again with the orc rebel leader to finalize a plan to overthrow the hill giants. And the uh, orc leader told them that he now had 135 orcs total. But uh, unfortunately, most of them were weakened from being overworked by the giants and their morale was not that great and they might flee if the fighting got too tough. Uh, however, he said that he, his lieutenants, and about three dozen other orcs were all eager to fight the hill giants and win back their freedom despite whatever risks they might face. So after uh, conferring, the characters decided that they sh should first go back and defeat the three stone giants, which they had found down here, and that was covered in the last video because they, they didn't want these giants to suddenly appear upstairs and at their backs in case a uh, general melee broke out in the feasting hall up there. So the characters went back to this area that they had uh, investigated in the last video. So once they arrived back there at where the stone giants were located, Aramis and Threto charged in first. Uh, but unfortunately, Aramis immediately rolled a fumble. You can see that there in the chat window. And he ended up inflicting 13 points of damage on Threto. And, uh, of course, needless to say, the dwarf was not amused by that. So next round, more of the characters moved into attack, but then Gorbadoc rolled a fumble as well. Uh, luckily, he did not inflict additional damage on Threto, 
Otherwise, the dwarf would have probably immediately quit the whole thing and stormed off in disgust. But uh, luckily, that did not happen. So after the stone giants were defeated, uh, the character searched the room and found a nice hall of gold. It seemed that the hill giants were paying the stone giants very well to oversee their mining operations down here. So the characters realized that there were other unexplored areas in this uh, part of the lower level and they decided that they should be investigated too. So they, they first found a large storeroom which contained mining tools and other supplies. But then there was also a padlock door on the north wall of that room and Garrett was able to easily pick that lock. And beyond that, the characters found a short passageway leading to another padlock door, and Garrett soon had that one picked as well. And all of that activity is happening in this area pointed out on the map. So gaining access to that second door, the characters found a storeroom which contained kegs and barrels of various sizes. They were all marked with labels in the common language and appeared to be high quality wine, ale, and so forth. And uh, just based on the information printed on the labels, the characters surmised that uh, these had been looted by the hill giants during their recent raids on human settlements. So continuing on in another unexplored passage, the characters found an underground pool of water and uh, just checking it out, it was uh, clear, fresh water, and the characters figured that the hill giants were using it as a source of drinking water for their fort here. That area where the characters are now located is pointed out here. So uh, Varus announced that he was going to enter the pool of water to see if there was anything to be discovered in it. And so, therefore, the other characters tied a rope around him, and he waded in. Meanwhile, Thoral hooked his lantern on the end of his staff and held it out over the water, just to give Vera some more light to see by as, as far as possible. So Varys dove underwater and swam around, and he determined that the floor of the pool was a concave bowl shape. It was about 14 feet deep at the center, and then uh, at that location there was a about a four foot wide hole in the in the floor. So Varus resurfaced and told the other characters what he had found, and then he said he was going to dive into the hole at the bottom of the pool to see if it led anywhere. So uh, just to be safe, the other characters tied a second 50 foot length of rope to the first just in case Varys got in too far and couldn't get back out on his own and they could hopefully pull him back out. So Varys swam into the underwater tunnel and uh, quickly discovered that it turned horizontal heading east. And he swam not very far, a couple dozen feet, and then he surfaced in a gently flowing stream within a natural cavern. And uh, it was dark in there, but he has infravision. So uh, not seeing any sources of light or any other activity, uh, Varys dove back underwater and returned the way he'd come. And this natural cavern with the stream of water is pointed out here on this map. So returning to the pool room and resurfacing, Varys fired up some of his elf root to calm his nerves. And he described to the others what he had found as they helped to uh, pull him back in to the steps using the rope. So they all agreed that the cavern that Varys had discovered should be further investigated, but they also decided that the assault on the hill giants upstairs should come first. So therefore, they all returned back to the orc rebel stronghold to confer with the orc leader and finalize their plans. So they first decided that the characters would lead the way back upstairs and that they would take out the ogres who they had previously found gambling in a room upstairs across from the kitchen's uh, back entrance. 
And then once that was accomplished, the orc rebel leader would lead his tribe up the stairs and then outside to the fort's inner courtyard where the characters had previously defeated the wolves. And then uh, once everybody was there, the attack on the hill giants feasting hall would be organized. So moving back upstairs, the major NPC stayed in the kitchen storeroom. You can see there on the upper left hand corner while the characters dashed across the hallway and rushed into the ogre's room. And all that action is taking place in the area pointed out here on the upper level map. And uh, as the characters uh, deployed, Garrett immediately scored a critical hit on one of the ogres with his bow. And the ogres were easily defeated, and in fact, they uh, were defeated so quickly that none of them even had a chance to make an attack or all of their own against the characters. So it was all over fast and quietly, which is exactly what the characters wanted. So uh, searching around the room, the characters found a heavy iron chest containing the ogre's treasure, which was a mixture of gold and silver coins. And the uh, chest was far too heavy for them to move, so they decided to just uh, shut it back up and leave it in here. And their plan was to use it to pay off the orcs after the attack on the hill giants. So uh, next, the characters followed the orc tribe uh, into the outer courtyard as per the plan they discussed. And you can see all that uh, here. And Thoral began briefing the orcs on the character's plan while Varys translated it into the orcish language. And all of that activity is happening in this space here pointed on the map, which is actually an open courtyard and not a room. So unfortunately, the bulk of the orcs, as previously mentioned, were only a fair morale and they might not be reliable if the fighting got too intense. However, a smaller group of orcs, which here in the screenshot are assembled near to the orc leader, uh, they were both better equipped and they had a higher morale and it uh, they were deemed to be much more reliable during the upcoming battle. So what the characters did, they uh, first divided the orcs into three assault groups, which uh, consisted of both high morale orcs and those who were deemed to be less reliable. And uh, Thoral uh, pointed out here on the lower left-hand corner, along with the dwarf Thrato, would lead one group of orcs into the feasting hall from its southern doors and uh, Thoral would also initiate the overall attack with a fireball spell which he was going to cast at the hill giant chieftain's head table and uh, this would be the signal for all of the groups to move into the feasting hall simultaneously and this arrow here points out the southern doors at Thoral this group was going to move in through. And then meanwhile, Varys and the NPC elf, whose name was Renion, would uh, lead their force of orcs through the feasting hall's eastern door. And once inside, they would attack whatever giants opposed them as they worked their way deeper into the room. And this points out the doors that Varys and his force were going to enter through. And then uh, next, the rest of the characters, along with the orc rebel leader and the remaining orcs, would attack through the feasting hall's western doors, which were near the kitchen. And this arrow points out those doors. Except that uh, Garrett, by himself, and he's pointed out here, would peel off with a smaller team of orcs and they would go back into the kitchen's uh, back door. And their job was to rally the orc slaves who were working in the kitchen and get them to join the rebellion. And uh, that 
back door to the kitchen area is pointed out here. And then uh, Garrett's team would then sweep through the kitchen area and kill or drive off the female hill giants and the ogres who were working in there, which would also serve to distract them from attacking Obrak and the other characters from behind. And this arrow points out the direction that Garrett would lead his team uh, through down into the main kitchen area. And then Garrett would uh, lead his team through the feasting hall's western doors, following in behind the group led by Obrak and the other characters. And this arrow shows, shows their direction of movement after they cleared out the kitchen. So, uh, just in summary, the overall plan was for all three groups to fight their way towards the center of the feasting hall and meet up at the hill giant chieftain's head table in the center. And it was hoped that by attacking from all three directions at once, the hill giants would be thrown into so much confusion and chaos that they would be unable to mount any meaningful defense. All right, well, that's all I have for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. Feel free to leave a comment, share the video anywhere you think others might enjoy it. And uh, anything you can do to help to support the channel, I appreciate it. Thanks again. Bye for now. The greatest adventure is one. Bye.